the story of a witch hunt, an outrageous paranoia and unfounded claim surrounding Schooner Creek Farms and her family, which has led to national defamation, harassment, and threats of violence, and locals calling to have her banned from a public farmer's market, which she has been a part of for nine years. Why? Because Sarah and her husband, Doug, aren't self-hating white people folding to the current order of anti-whiteness. They aren't communists, and in this day and age, that makes you a Nazi. And in the eyes of rabid globalists, that makes you and your family fair game for absolutely anything, even threats of violence. In this exclusive interview, Sarah joins us to tell us all about it. Welcome, Sarah. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Sorry that we have to meet under these circumstances. It is a, it's, it's quite, it's quite wild what is happening, but hey, nothing like coming out like a bang, right? So how are you holding up these days with everything? Yes. Um, pretty well, pretty well, surprisingly, uh, just despite all of the chaos of the last couple of months, I'm definitely maintaining each day and just trying to stay positive. So that's all I can do. I think that you're really doing the right thing talking about this publicly. I think it's one of the best things that you can do to really put it out there so that people can hear the the story unfiltered because there's so much flying around that we'll get into. But you are a homeschooling mom of three. You manage a beautiful organic farm. I saw the, the pictures. It's absolutely lovely. You also raise Shetland sheep and you offer wool products, uh, sheep to shawl, as you call it, which I love that, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and you've donated a lot of your time to the community. You're, you've been loved by the people. And then it became public that you were a European identitarian, which means that you love uh, European heritage, right? You aren't a self-hating communist. So before we get into the events that followed, tell us how this all first came out and how you were doxxed. This dox came out um, in the springtime. There was a concerted effort by um, Antifa groups to dox members of Identity Europa, uh, which is now dissolved group. Um, and it was made known that many of the members, that basically the entire membership, are well-adjusted, kind, um, law-abiding citizens who just happen to have dissenting, dissenting viewpoints. And um, I was one of the people who was doxxed as a member of that group. The thing is, you've never actually been public with your views, right? I mean, this is what, exactly. what has actually come out that caused such a hysteria in your town to have you be doxxed and people calling for you to be removed from this farmer's market? Uh, well, basically, I mean, there was a handful of mildly pro-white statements that I had made in a Discord server over the course of a couple of years. And... Um, I, you know, I'm not a self-hating white person. I do love my European heritage. I am proud to be American. I'm very concerned about immigration currently in the state of our country. And I absolutely oppose uh, the globalist regime um, that, that's happening right now. So the town where we make a living by selling our produce and farm products happens to be an extremely liberal town, uh, which is Bloomington, Indiana. The mayor is extremely far left. Mm -hmm. He's even, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he's even changed some names of holidays for city staff, like Good Friday is now called something else and, and so on. So it's just, it's an extremely liberal area. However, we've never discussed our political views at the farmer's market at all. So now tell us how this campaign unfolded to get you banned, because I know, yes, the mayor was talking about you. There were several public forums. I mean, this is really yeah. nutty. This is just a nutty story. You know, I it, can't it, even I can't even believe it. So tell us how that how that unfolded, how you were dragged into this and how it started becoming a big thing in the town where they were talking about it in the city council meetings and whatnot. Oh, right. Yeah. So basically, um, Local activists picked up on the um, national doxing. Uh, Emily Gorzinski had done some tweets. Um, Unicorn Riot, you know, these, these well-funded oh, yeah. Antifa organizations had done the initial, you know, doxing of members of Identity Europa. And local Antifa picked up on the story and basically just started coming to the farmer's market, harassing. Um, the far leftists began putting immense pressure on the city and the farmer's market and the mayor a group called No Space for Hate formed. Um, I'm not sure if they have nonprofit status. I'm looking into that, but they are a well-funded organization who began organizing boycotts and protests at the farmer's market specifically for our booth um, and printing just you know horrific 
slanderous flyers. I've got, you know, flyers here and it's like 90% of the um, information on these flyers isn't even about me or us. It's about other individuals and other groups. Uh, but somehow, you know, that's they're trying to connect it all to us, which is just ridiculous. Now, is there anyone that was speaking up for you at the farmers or for in behalf of you being banned at the farmers market at one of these city council meetings? Yeah, absolutely. There was at least one. Uh, there were a handful of people, maybe two or three individuals. And I know I tried to send you some video footage. I'm not sure if you got it, but basically almost every person who tried to stand up for us just got shut down and uh, free speech was not an item for them. It was not available for them. And uh, one of the men in particular, he's, you know, a, a blonde haired Christian white man, and he tried to stand up and speak out against Antifa and the Antifa in the crowd and the whole crowd in general just completely shouted him down. And I believe the phrase they were chanting is, you know, your time is up, your time is up. <laughs> so it's like, they all got to rant and rave and go beyond their two minutes, but anyone who spoke in our favor was shut down immediately. I mean, this is just like the Twilight Zone and, or invasion of the body snatchers, you know. Now, is it just a, a small vocal minority? Now, what do other people in the town think? We, we showed some pictures there. We'll show some video of Antifa blocking your booth when you're trying to sell vegetables. What do the passerbys think? What, what have they been saying to you? I would say the majority of the people do not like what's happening at the farmer's market with Antifa and no space for hate. Uh, many of the vendors are supportive of us. Um, they understand that farmers all have different views and none of the farmers bring their viewpoints to the farmer's market. Um, only people who are sitting in a place of, of privilege at the farmer's market, which is these far leftists, have the ability to be very vocal and shout about what their beliefs are. We have customers who've shoved through the Black Block Antifa to get to our stand to buy from us. Mm -hmm. And we've received hundreds and hundreds of emails of support, not only nationally, but from local people as well, all over the state, just saying, you know, stay strong and keep selling your produce. They support the farmers of America and they don't like what Antifa is doing. Now, before we play some of these clips so people can get an idea and we can talk about the kind of harassment that you're dealing with, have they been, they weren't successful in getting you banned because it's a public market, but then what they did is, well, tell you can tell us what they did, right? They, they decided to cancel that and then start a new private one, right? Tell us about that. Right. Right. So the market is um, city owned. So it's under, you know, the, the mayor is the authority of, of it all. And um, basically, Black Block Antifa showed up at our farmer's market stand on July 20th. And one of the men organizing that group is a violent criminal who is one of the Tinley Park Five, who did the Tinley Park attacks in Chicago of 2012. John Tucker is his name. And the mayor uh, has completely ignored, even up to this date, he has not acknowledged that Antifa was there at the market in Black Block. He's not acknowledged that we have had criminal Antifa there organizing them. And instead, he said that there were uh, white nationalist threats to the safety of the farmer's market. Therefore, they were going to have to close it down for two weeks and set up a temporary market on the other side of town where all of the vendors, which are close to 100 vendors, were invited to vend except for Schooner Creek Farm, which is our farm, which is just absolutely ridiculous. And when pressed for information or more details about the so-called white nationalist threat to the farmer's market, the mayor has said no comment, no comment on every single request, um, including, you know, formal request and press conference questions, et cetera. So... Of course, he's an Antifa himself. Now, I want to remind people about Tinley Park. We'll play just a little clip of that. Uh, it was a, in Indiana, I believe. It was a old people having a, just a European heritage meetup in a restaurant. And this the same people that are behind harassing you, several of them also did this. Let's just take a look at this so we can remember what happened. What's going on there now? Um, I don't, we're not, um, yeah, it's like literally like 15 kids. They had... Um, handkerchiefs over their face and were wearing black hoods and they came in and they said what's up motherfucker bitch and then they like took a chair and then like threw it at a guy is anybody hurt there yes there are people hurt yes okay we're gonna need to get an ambulance over there as well hold on a second oh my god dude are you bleeding okay we got ambulances coming how many people are hurt Can you tell me how many people are hurt i don't know there's like several people that are hurt. 
911. You need to get a uh, cox over to Ashford House on 159th Street. Quickly, there was a group that just came in here, served everybody up. They did Please, what? quickly, and I think we might what even need an answer. What did they do? They came in with a, with started beating the place up with chairs, and they're hitting everybody over the head. Are they still there? No, they ran out in the parking lot, but you need to get the police over here, I, right? You now. have a... So just a reminder of of what kind of people these people are. And what's happening is that the media is running with stories of your family is a white supremacist. You guys are a threat. Everything is unsafe now because of you and your children selling organic vegetables. I mean, seriously, listen to this. You're not a criminal. You've done nothing wrong. What is your what is your crime? But now the city is unsafe because of you. Not because of guys like like I just showed you there who come in with bats and clubs and chains and have no problem going after old people who are at some European heritage meetup, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's it's just absolutely crazy. Now, tell us about the harassment. I know there's some pictures that are going to be rolling here of how uh, people in the town, Antifa, is personally harassing your family. Yeah, well, uh, beginning with, you know, rumors uh, in the past couple of years, just based on personal conversations I had had with a couple of female friends who I thought were close friends who turned out to be uh, insane feminists um, who kind of started some rumors. We had actually initially had a problem with Antifa last year. They came out to our property and vandalized our mailbox and left a bunch of fake blood, um, spray painted uh, fascist on the road. And our nine-year-old son found it when he went to check the mail and was pretty traumatized. Uh, he didn't understand what was going on. And because they spray-painted fascist, we kind of had an idea that it was them. They had already been at the market a time or two, kind of harassing us. And um, so it kind of began with that. But more recently, we've certainly received you know, several threats online. Um, and then, of course, just them coming to the booth and attempting to intimidate us is has become basically a recurring theme at the market. And, you know, they're just trying to bully us out of the farmer's market, make us feel like we have no right to be here. Um, and they're and they're losing. Um, we aren't going anywhere. And we have not done anything wrong. No. We're not criminals. And, uh, and we have nothing to apologize for. No, you don't. So, <laughs> you have done nothing wrong. Let's show some footage of just an example of what you deal with when you're selling some vegetables here. Just audio here. No, yeah, I definitely don't buy from Nazis at all. You guys are despicable. You should leave our community. You should not be here. Fuck all of y'all. These people are Nazis. Why the fuck would you buy from them? Are you a Nazi? Nazi sympathizer? Fucking despicable people. No, they are literally members of Identity Europa. Sarah Dye is Volkmom. Look up Volkmom, you'll hear her voice. I've they are they years. are actual Nazis. They are actually I'm using my free speech to counter their free speech. They have free speech to be Nazi assholes. I have free speech to say I don't like Nazi assholes. Straight up. <laughs> Trashy guys. We got our eyes on y'all motherfuckers. Alright, lovely. Here's another one. Another one for you. I'm just here to freaking virtue signal. Doug, you can do the business. Oh, yeah. Don't go see them. I mean, is this continuing every week now? You just have a posse of these people, and it's like 90 degrees out or something, right? <laughs> oh, it's just crazy. Yeah, they they have basically come every week. They were there again last week uh, when my husband was vending, and it's like I don't I, – I think that what they want is for someone to provoke them, but what they don't understand is that we're actually well-adjusted, law-abiding citizens who don't go around, you know, battering others, so – now, have They're they been kidding. kicked out? Have the police come? What has happened to these people? I mean, they can't just stand there and, and do that, can they? Uh, they're not supposed to. And beginning in uh, June, when all this started, they were basically just getting away with whatever they wanted. There were protesters inside 
the farmer's market. One weekend after our farm flooded, we did not come to market, and the staff allowed these protesters to stand in our rented, paid-for space, uh, holding signs with video cameras and just slandering us throughout the entire farmer's market. Uh, there were multiple times when we were there venting, we asked them to remove them and they did not do so. However, more recently, they have began to enforce the market rules and they also have an increased police presence there, which has helped immensely. Now, I heard, too, that, you know, when you were being stalked by these unhinged people, of course, you were a little worried. So you had a couple friends come and guard you. I don't know, eight or nine friends or so maybe guard you at the booth for a little while. And then that turned into, oh, my gosh, white supremacists are taking over the farmer's market and it's unsafe. Right. That's what happened. Well, actually, no, that's that's not what happened. Oh, OK. Um, what happened, yeah. No, we we have never asked for anybody to come guard us at the booth. Um, we are just there alone or occasionally we'll have one stand assistant helping us, you know, bag groceries or bag vegetables. But one week after the Black Bloc Antifa was there at the market, we received Facebook messages from a group called the Three Percenters, which I was not familiar with that group prior to this. Um, and they were saying, hey, you know, we battle Antifa and, you know, we don't like what they're doing down there at the farmer's market. So we're going to come down there and stand between you and them. And I said, you know, thank you, but no, thank you. Uh, we do not want, you know, groups clashing at the farmer's market or violence or anything like that, because, uh, first of all, we don't, you know, we want the market to be a peaceful place, but also just because of the nature of all this, they'll blame it on us. So please don't. Um, however, they came anyway just to shop from the vendors. They said that they had received um, reports from vendors at the farmer's market that since Antifa was coming there and no space for hate, that the sales were down. So this group came anyway. We had nothing to do with them. They were very nice. They bought vegetables from us. But, of course, they are a group of masculine, older, <laughs> uh, mostly older white males. And that was, you know, extremely alarming. scary. Yeah, well, yeah they, so they, exactly. Okay. Yeah, I see. I see. So then that, that spun into white supremacists are taking over the markets. There was a piece exactly. even in New York Times, New York Slime. Sorry. I mean, it just like got out everywhere. What do you think about the, this story involving you? I mean, you're such a kind hearted, amazing woman and you have the sweet family and you grow this good, wholesome, healthy food that, you know, you sell to the community. What are your thoughts as you see these mainstream articles slandering you like this? Oh, well, that's a good question. Um, it's been a long couple of months and, you know, it certainly was very alarming at first to sit there and have to read all of these uh, terrible comments and, and slander online that people are saying about you and to kind of feel helpless and not be able to respond. Um, however, over time, I guess it's, it's kind of just, it all just kind of runs together. And um, I'm not really uh, hurt by it anymore at all because I can see that it's, kind of just taken on a life of its own and and the lies will keep going but all I can do is really control myself and um, and so that's what I do but I do think that a large part of this is because I am formerly a leftist I used to consider myself a feminist many years ago and I kind of woke up to uh, traditional values and and kind of came back home you might say and I do feel like a lot of this has just been kind of a punishment from from the left. Uh, I do yeah. view it as kind of almost cult-like. Oh and yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> what I see, yeah, like what I see that they've done with me is the same way that one, that they treat someone who leaves a cult essentially. Mm -hmm. exactly. So I think that that's definitely yeah, I think it's fueling them for sure. I think it's interesting, too, that they go so hard after women, women, women like you who speak out, who are vote. You know, vo well, actually, you haven't even really spoke out. You had a couple comments online, no. right? You haven't even been vocal or anything, not remotely. Right. Uh, but th you think these thoughts, right? That's your crime. I mean, really, isn't that your crime? You're thinking thoughts yeah. that they don't like. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. They're so controlling and totalitarian. It's it's unbelievable. And they're, and, they're yeah, going absolutely. after women so hard. I notice women so yeah. hard they're standing up against this, you know, leftist establishment. Uh, I get it all the time. I know several other women get it all the time. Girls who have appeared on the show get it all the time, you know, uh, and even sure. more so than some of the guys. Now, uh, how about your husband? How are they treating him and all this? Uh, they've treated him, I'd say, even worse, ah. uh, which is which is really crazy because uh, he was never a member of 
um, Identity Europa. He's not a member of the American Identity Movement as I am today. Um, he's never had an online account or posted anything. And of course, his name has been dragged through the mud as well, which is very unfortunate. But however, uh, we stand in unity together. And um, so, you know, we're, we're a team. We've how we operate. So isn't it funny, though, how you aren't the one that's targeting a family? You're not the one getting in their face. You're not the one telling them, hey, you need to leave town and you can't live here and we're going to build walls to keep you out that they are. They are essentially telling you this is our town and we're going to say who can live here and can't live here. And we want to deport you and your family. Isn't that funny how that works? It, oh, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And some of these same people are online, you know, saying that we should have our children taken away from <laughs> us. Uh, should not be allowed to homeschool them and should be thrown in jail uh, for literally nothing. Um, like you said, wrong think essentially. So it's, it is definitely scary. It's something people need to be aware of. Um, yeah, this is communism. Yeah. This is like communism 2.0, you know. Well, speaking of children, check out this message from Karen Helming, who I believe is a teacher and people were notifying uh, her uh, employers. Who needs a bullet? Speaking of you, because you brought your baby to work, right? Selling vegetables. Who needs a bulletproof vest when you can use a baby as a shield? Karen Helming. Ha! Nailed it. Oh. She is just a common local Nazi dead inside looking for an inner life force she denied long ago. I mean, all of this from like the just total, uh, cre total uh, creation of the media. This woman is just so deranged. She can feed off others. She is mentally ill and Im spiritually improper. All of this, all of this because of some New York Slimes piece or some Daily Beast piece. She thinks she knows everything about you. It's like, no, you're the cult member, lady. She is the worst yeah. of the worst. It makes me sick. I bought these things from her. I used my precious grandchildren. She duped me. What, because they bought vegetables from you? <laughs> it's just so. like, no, but we're talking about people here who are talking about your ba you using your baby as a bulletproof vest. What, what is she really getting at here? That they would, that there's people who would, would shoot you? Apparently, and apparently she thinks that that's something to joke about. And it's, it's absolutely sick. Um, we have three children and we started vending at the farmer's market when our oldest was a baby. And I have worn all three of my babies on my chest in the baby carrier, uh, which is convenient for breastfeeding and caring for the baby. I've worn all three of them to market like that for almost a decade. Um, and, you know, and this is still what I'm doing. I obviously bring my baby to the farmer's market so that I can take care of him. Uh, I don't just, you know, leave an infant yeah. at a babysitter all day. What so. do they know? Yeah. What do they know? She probably doesn't even have yeah. children, you know? Jeez, but that's that's amazing it. that they're saying these things about your kids. I mean, and and they have the gall to call you mentally ill. When these exactly. people, I mean, the comments that they're making in the utter hysteria and delusion, and they can't even really say why. It's just a total creation of media, right? Yeah, it's, it is crazy. I've seen so many people just flat out lying. And it's kind of like maybe they had heard my name before or they loosely knew who the farm was, but they're online speaking about us as if they've known me well for years. Um, even that woman on that comment just there who said she's purchased from me, um, I'm pretty sure that she never has. Yeah, these people and just lie. I, they lie. They're, yeah, they they're the biggest liars. Lie. I, I have it's been crazy. in several situations like that where I'm like, you are just straight up lying and have yes. zero moral conscience about it. That's who these people it's are. Bizarre. I mean, we're dealing with sick people. And we need to treat them that way. Absolutely. <sighs> Now, there, yeah. was, there was another market, I think, was it in Nashville, Indiana, that you helped to yes. set up? Now, tell us about that one, because yes. you were banned from that one, right? Oh, that's just, it's awful. Um, yeah, I had set up a farmer's market with two other women in our little tiny town. And, um, you know, we just had poured hundreds of hours of volunteer time serving on a board of directors. Of, I was the president of the board of directors there. And it was just getting off to a fantastic start. The community was thrilled that I was the board president. The market had been greatly improved. And um, then, you know, we had some activists, some local Antifa activists come to the market and kind of weasel their way in there and bully the rest of the board into kicking me off the board and also kicking our farm out as vendors. <laughs> and yeah, it was very shady and crooked. They're a nonprofit, so apparently they went in and kind of like tweaked the bylaws or something in order to 
um, get me kicked out. But the market has since basically plummeted um, on, on the days when it runs. There's hardly anybody shopping there, and it's a shame. And, of course, they'll probably blame that on me. However, I know that most of the community doesn't want to go to the market anymore. They've kind of formed their own little boycott because they're so opposed to how they treated me with the situation. So. Yeah, good. And they can just buy directly from you, right? And people should. They should they have- s- sign up for your CSA yep. share and just buy directly from you. And so how, how is business on that front, too? Because ultimately, that's what they want. They want to hit your business. They want to make you starve. They want to make you homeless. They want to make your children on the street. These are sick, sick people we're dealing with. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, I would say that as far as business goes, we have certainly lost a ton of customers in the ultra lefty Bloomington. Um, But we've also gained a ton of new customers, which has been a really interesting and amazing phenomenon to witness. We have, you know, tens upon tens of people coming to farmers market now saying, hey, you know, I've lived here 15 years and I've never come to market, but I came just to buy from you. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We have whole new customer base of supporters all over the state. Yeah, and, and yeah, we've had a lot of people. And it's a win-win situation just, because now they can come and eat your organic vegetables and get healthy and get good yes, vibes exactly. and support a good family. So, I mean, that makes me really happy. And that that's yeah, ultimately that's what sticks it to them, you know. Now, I, I did, I do know, I spoke to your attorney. He said he contacted the city attorney and asked him if, if the city planned to engage in a discrimination and violate the contract that they have with you. And they said that they will not violate the contract, whatever that means. So we'll see. So I, I suppose that this market is just going to keep continuing, even if it plummets. Is it going to continue or how does that work? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, The majority of the vendors at the large city-owned market are there because it is their main source of income. It's one of the biggest, most successful farmers markets in the entire Midwest, and there are almost 100 vendors. So all of the vendors, including us, plan to continue going there. However, there are a handful of vendors who are giving a little protest and setting up on the other side of town, losing lots of money on top of it. Um, The city cannot kick us out because it would be violating, you know, discrimination laws. Um, However, apparently, according to the mayor, they are looking into ways to alter the contract for 2020 so that Schooner Creek Farm cannot apply to vend, which I have no idea how they could possibly do that. But apparently they're going to try. Yeah. And also the pressure from No Space for Hate, this really hateful group. (laughs) Yeah. Always. has been so immense. And I know you had a screenshot up there a little while ago of them actually saying openly that they are raising money in part to pay for Antifa bail funds. Yeah. So here we have a group that's clearly raising money for um, plans of criminal activity at the market. And the mayor has supported them. And, you know, they have even printed these T-shirts. They've raised thousands of dollars. Who knows what they're doing with the money? But here's one of the T-shirts here. Uh, Boy Scouts are boycotts are free speech. They're just like they're so horribly ugly. They have people walking around wearing these all over the farmers market, um, and the mayor fully supports them. So he's like he's apparently free, a crooked guy. They're literally going after taxpayers and tax funded public squares, and they're like, oh, it's well, it's my free speech to do that. Now they're just using the government. They have no problem. Ultimately, that's what they want to do. Use the government exactly. to haul people like us away and put us in gulag camps. I mean, seriously, I mean, the, the people that you're dealing with, the, the kinds of people that are coming at you, that that is their mentality. That is what they want. They don't give a damn about free speech. They're just using it to try and destroy it, as we've seen. They Absolutely. wear their little T-shirts about peace and love and tolerance, and it's all garbage. Because if you're not a communist, they'll come for you and your children violently. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, they're only about peace and tolerance when it comes to their own very specific group and thinking exactly like they do. And you even see online, the second that you get even like a classical liberal or, you know, a libertarian or just somebody who maybe thinks a little bit differently than them, who's like asking objective questions about this situation and saying, well, wait a minute, you know, I've been shopping from that booth for years and I've never seen them act like that at all. And it's just like, you know, this mob just like descends down upon them. And <laughs> yeah. them and then just like kicks them out of the 
It's like it's like a, a zombie virus. I mean, seriously, it's the only thing I can exp- the only way I can explain it. And the, the thing is, the majority of people don't know that this is going on. When I've shared the story with just like normie tier people, they're just like, "What?" <laughs> you know? Yeah. This is it's a small, very vocal, loud minority, and unfortunately, yeah. that small local vocal loud minority is also in our governments now as you can see with your with your mayor right. uh no well, that's interesting well there must be a lawsuit if they're going to try and alter that kind of contract and try and block you from the public space i mean yeah, I, how could they absolutely. do that you would have to you would have to take that to higher up courts i guess and fight that or something yes absolutely and we would certainly intend to and in the meantime we intend to retain a local attorney, we have been fortunate to have um, a friend, you know, offer advice here and there, and that's been great, but we are looking to retain a local attorney to go after some of these people who have so horrifically defamed us and slandered us. Um, so we are actually hoping to make that happen very soon. Yeah, that's good. And people need to support you. They can donate on your website, correct? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay, we'll share all, we'll share all the links for that. Now, what are you doing also on top of things? Are you uh, possibly fundraising for some kind of uh, cameras? Because I think you need to be <laughs> surveilling a lot of these people and just really uh, be smart and watch your back and and be filming constantly. What Absolutely. Are you do, what are you that's, doing on that front? Well, we do have a camera at the booth. We've had it there for um, pretty much the whole summer, and we also have you know plenty of security cameras on our farm as well. So I think we're pretty covered on that front, but yeah, mainly just getting the funds for the attorney is our, is the big project right now on top of everything else that's going on in life. So that's what we're working on. Yeah, I know it's big and I, I really appreciate you coming forward and talking about this. It's, it's very important. Not a lot of people are so brave. Oh, by the way, t- tell us about this lady that we sh- see here so people know it's not some random lady. <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, This is Abby Ang, who is, I believe, a professor at Indiana University. And she is the woman who's um, founded this group called No Space for Hate, which is a terribly ironic name. It's a group that's full of hate. Yes, it is. Uh, She claims claims to be an activist. Um, She seems to just be somebody who likes to go around agitating and preaching from a soapbox about things that make no sense whatsoever. But yeah, she's been extremely destructive to the farmer's market. And um, she's, you know, the one behind this this very corrupt group called No Space for Hate. Um, and yeah, she's organized a petition to get us kicked out of the farmer's market. And the funny thing is, I've never even met this woman in my life. I've never even had a conversation with her. And until all this started, I had never even seen her at the farmer's market. Yeah, I saw some footage of uh, one of the, was it one of the council meetings or town hall meeting or something? You sent me some clips of of people who were getting on their soapbox and they were complaining about you. And then they would just take it and go off in these tangents, something about race and something about this and that and that. that had nothing to do with you or anything that was going on. It's just lunacy. Oh, it is lunacy. Yeah. And it's, it's been really funny, too, because the people who are behind this whole ordeal are not market shoppers. I mean, I, there's very few of them that I've ever seen at the farmer's market actually <laughs> shopping. And it's kind of like they just show up out of the blue and all of a sudden they're just terribly passionate about the farmer's market. And we have one woman at this forum who's going on this rant about how all of the farmland in Indiana is owned by white people and how she's a black female yeah. farmer who can't get into the farmer's market. And it's like, excuse me, but you, you do the hard work, you plant the crops in the ground, and you fill out an application, and, and you get down there to say, <laughs> you can sell. Like, I, I'm no stopping one is stopping you. Yeah. That, that, that is funny. No one is stopping you. And I've actually seen attacks, a lot of attacks lately about how there's too many white farmers in America. We've been covering that and following those stories like no one is stopping any uh, non-white people from, as you say, putting seeds in the ground and growing food and selling it. Absolutely no one is stopping you from doing that. But it is interesting. Uh, I mean, what, what happens if uh, all, all these, they keep talking about the old white people who are farming. Well, and the concern that once they die, who's going to grow the food, right? Ding dong, yeah. I guess it's just kind of hitting. Just kind of realize, they're just realizing this, you know. Right, yeah, and it, it is certainly a concern. And, you know, that's why they're very happy to see, these older farmers are happy to see younger people getting into yeah. the farming business. We do need more of that. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So, so what's next? You have the attorney, you're still selling, you're uh, watching your back. <laughs> what else can you tell us? Um, well, basically, uh, I just feel even more convicted in my views from all of this. Uh, I feel even stronger with the importance of uh, defending our people through peaceful and lawful activism, which is what the American Identity Movement is all about. And I'm you know, very proud to be a part of that. It's an amazing community. They have been extremely supportive of us, and we've had just so much help from them. And um, so, yeah, let's just keep marching forward, being positive and, you know, doing the right thing, staying healthy and working to improve ourselves. So Absolutely. that's what we're all about. You know, I saw this disturbing article in reference to everything that was happening with you. It was, uh, the title was, White Supremacy is Terrorism not a difference in opinion. So they're basically trying to say now that a difference in opinion is terrorism. That is what they're claiming. I mean, these people are, they support an oppressive, tyrannical, totalitarian system who wants to punish us for thinking differently, where they will go after women like Sarah, lovely women like Sarah, who have children and homeschool and grow vegetables and live a, a peaceful life. I mean, we are the threat I and mean, people need to wake up and realize this. You know, most of the people who are called white supremacists and extremists and defiled and defamed in every way possible in mainstream news are some of the most normal, most kind, gracious, well-rounded people that you will ever meet. And I know that you've also discovered that to be true. <laughs> now that you're in the in the the white supremacist club, you know, being defamed in New York slimes, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is crazy, uh, you know. Yeah, you kind of have to laugh really in order to to keep sane because otherwise it can be really blackpilling. So you have to keep the humor and stay positive, and that's all we can do. That's right, and we have to get the truth out there. You have to let people Absolutely. know what's going on. Because I talk to so many young kids, they don't even know about what's happening, uh, YouTube censorship, they have no idea. We have to try and talk to all the people that we meet along the way and try and kind of drop a little, a few red pills here and there for people. I think that that's, that's very important. Yeah. You have an interesting journey ahead of you, and we all wish you the best, and everyone needs to go and support you, help uh, pull in for an attorney, because I think you probably will have some defamation lawsuits, correct? Maybe go after some yes. of these people who are not correcting some of these lies in the press about you. Absolutely. That's the number one goal right now moving forward is to be able to retain an attorney. And obviously, as farmers, we don't have a huge amount of savings. So any uh, donations our way would be greatly appreciated. And we have that set up on the website. So now are you also looking out for your farm? I just worry about some of these freaks yeah. like coming and trying to sabotage your your farm and whatnot. Yeah, we're definitely looking out for the farm. Um, it's also our residence. So we're here all the time and we have plenty of security cameras. So, you know, we're doing all that we can do. Okay, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. Well, thank you so much. It's, it takes a, a very brave woman, a true brave woman. Feminists are always like, oh, we're so stunning and brave. No, try try walking in our shoes. That's bravery right there. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I really oh, appreciate you. Yeah, coming forward and sharing your story, I think it's very important and you need to hold your ground and know that you have a lot of support. And I think that there's a lot of uh, people who, who don't know about identitarianism who would also support you. I saw that there were some Trump supporters and other people uh, writing some articles in your defense. I think that they're seeing just the hysteria. We know that Antifa is a terrorist group. It's on the radar of a lot of people. And, you know, hopefully something will be done with this. Hopefully they'll be labeled some kind of a terrorist group. But it seems like now they're more worried about housewives and uh, farmers like you and uh you know, vloggers like me, it seems. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's hope, yeah, let's hope that Trump does the right thing and makes them the organization that they are, which is the true terrorists. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, keep us posted and we'll have to have you on again, okay? Okay, great, thanks a lot. A prophet is never loved in his own hometown. Isn't that the truth? And we are the modern day prophets that the establishment fears. But remember, ultimately, nothing can shut down the truth of what is. Important news, we received a hate strike on YouTube for reporting on an African politician in Europe, in Portugal, who said that Europe is not white and that it will only be a great place when more people like her are living there. Wow, if that statement isn't the ultimate show of hate, what is?
So because of the strike, we cannot upload to our main YouTube channel for a week, but we still have our backup channel for now, Red Ice Media, for now, but our days are limited because there are ongoing ADL YouTube purges happening right now. So we might not even be there in a week. So it's important now more than ever that you follow our alternative links. Go to our websites, redicemembers.com and redice.tv. And of course, most importantly, become a Red Ice member or sustain your membership to support us in this turbulent, hysterical time so that we can continue to be a beacon of truth in the sea of insanity. Redicemembers.com, redice.tv. Love you all. Keep your head high. So my name is Scott Bornstein and I am a pediatric oncologist and I take care of children, teenagers and young adults with cancer. I could not do my job without the volunteers who donate their blood and their platelets for our patients. The reasons why platelets are so important for cancer patients is that a lot of the treatments we use to treat cancer can have side effects. And one of the side effects is, is it affects your body's ability to make normal blood cells. And so after you get certain types of chemotherapy, your body can't make platelets and so your platelet count falls and it makes you more likely to bleed. And so one of the ways that we help and support our patients that get intensive chemotherapy is we have to give them platelet transfusions. I just want to thank everybody who donates their blood to help our patients. We could not uh, treat our patients without you and you have my heartfelt gratitude. What if you could do one thing on Monday that might save a cancer patient's life on Wednesday? When you donate platelets, that's exactly what can happen. Platelets are tiny cells in your blood that form clots and stop bleeding. If you've ever fallen off your bike or cut yourself shaving, you've seen them in action. But these little cells do their best work helping cancer patients who often lack platelets due to the cancer or as a side effect of treatment. Platelets also prevent blood loss in patients undergoing surgery and organ transplants. Without platelets, patients wouldn't survive. They save lives every day. The challenge? Platelets are in constant demand by hospitals. And because platelets must be used within five days, new donors are needed every day. That's why we need you. Platelet donation is a little different than giving blood. Here's how it works. You'll make an appointment at a Red Cross donation center. During your visit, we'll draw blood through one arm, extract your platelets in a machine, and return the rest through your other arm. Relax, watch a movie, listen to music. A few hours later, you'll have donated enough platelets to help as many as three patients. So if you give on Monday, by Wednesday, she'll be able to recover quickly. He'll have a safe and successful surgery and she will have the strength she needs to keep fighting. To learn more or schedule an appointment, visit redcrossblood.org slash platelets or call 1-800-RED-CROSS.